Good morning, everybody. This is Pastor Patty with your Monday morning check-in for Monday, July 20th. Today's a special day in my world, and I'm just going to take a real quick second and give a shout out to my son. Happy birthday, Christopher. And now we'll go on. You know, there's been so much going on with the the pandemic and different rules coming down. And I'll be honest, I don't understand all of them. But what I do know is that it's tough and it's hard to make these decisions about what's right or wrong, especially when you have to make them for the good of the whole and not just for ourselves. You know, last evening, it was it was a tough evening. I, I spent a lot of time praying and just talking to God. And, and even this morning when I got up, I just did the same thing and was asking myself, what, are we making the right decisions? Are we listening to you? And you know, yes, we are. Each each organization has to make decisions based upon their knowledge and how what they feel. And we've had some 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 positive feedback from church members, and, and you know, we appreciate that. But it goes beyond a church service. This goes so far beyond just have, whether we have an eight or a ten thirty service. Just People, I'm sure by now, all of us thought, oh, we'd be back to normal. Well, I spent some time last night in devotion on a new normal, and there's no answer to that. But what I do know is sort of like the Apollo 13 gentleman who was in charge in Florida. His comment was, this will be our finest hour. And I truly believe that. I truly believe if we can remind ourselves to, to refocus at times and not get drawn down into the drama that we see out in society, that we can make a difference even during this unknown time. One of the studies I was reading last night was written by Dennis Jackson, and he had seven key words, and they were trust, control, grief, lonely, hope, fear and disciple. And no, I'm not talking to you about all of those. But you know, I think it's important that we realize that these are really true in, in our time, really true on July 20th, 2020. And we have to acknowledge that there is so much fear in the world today. There's fear as I was watching and reading things last night that we're on a watch list because of the number of cases we have. What does that mean? I don't know. And I can suppose all I want, but I'm not going to. What we're going to do is we're going to pray to God and take that control and we're going to move forward doing what we feel is best for everybody involved. But there's more than just the fear again, like I said, at church services. You know, every organization that has opened up since March 13th has had to set parameters based upon guidelines handed down to us. And this past week in the public eye was the public school system. And, you know, I, I always I wanted to be a teacher since second grade, and it's always going to be near and dear to my heart, especially with having my my family so involved in education. And, you know, there's fear. There's fear for the families because not one plan is good for every single person. And there are some people that are just willing to say, nope, you're wrong and I'm right. And I think that's something that we need to remember is we don't we don't know the, the steps that other people are walking right now. You know, as much as some parents would really like to be able to keep their children home, they can't. They can't afford childcare or, or they don't have, if they do that, they won't have to be able to go to work and have their jobs. And then you also have parents with special needs kids who need to have their children in school, but with the parameters in place, there's a concern of are they going to have their needs met? And you have your teachers, teachers who are so, they're in education not for the paycheck, my friends, but because they love children or teenagers, no matter what the age. And they have a fear of, am I going to be able to be good enough? Am I going to be able to do online and in person and, and do it and serve these children in the best way possible? You know, there's so much fear out there right now. And I would ask today that you just pray for all of them, but also remember that we can't feed in, feed into that Every person thinks they need to have control of that situation. You know, my prayer is that people make decisions, accept each other, and just continue to move on. There's another thing that Dennis Jackson mentioned, and I think it's really important that we remember, is that there is grief in this situation. And so often we think about grief as when somebody dies, we have grief, which is true. But when there is a loss of any kind, 
there's grief. There was a loss when I left my teaching position and, and it was a different kind of loss because of the situation I was in. There was, you know, last weekend we had this awesome wedding for my daughter. But even throughout that time, there was the loss of not having some family members from both sides of our families there to celebrate with us. There was a loss this week in my world. I was to be in San Diego. Nick and I were going to go out there today or this week, actually, and get to hang out with Chris and Ashley and our granddaughters and, and especially get to hold our, our new grandson and our, our new nephew, Noah Robert. And, and that didn't happen because we wanted to be safe for all accounts. And so we made that decision. And at first, when people asked me, I was like, ah, it's OK. But you know what? It's not. It's it is OK to be sad and it's okay to grieve and let that out because if in a normal or old normal, I would have been in California giving you a check-in from sunny San Diego. Actually, this time it would have been. But it's okay to grieve and it's okay to acknowledge that. So what is this do? What, what can we do? Well, we can do what it says in Proverbs and put our trust in the Lord. You know, I'm really concerned about our daycare and our church and, and, after a lot of hours of praying last night, you just got to sometimes let it go and say, I trust you. And when you do that, it turns into that disciple word that Pastor Nate talks about and Dennis Jackson has at the end of his devotion this morning. And it talks about the fact that by examples, by what we do, by sharing the fact that we have online services, that this is what our, our, our church is doing for our community. This is how we're reaching out. We're going to make a difference. We're going to bring people to God where they are because we're living life where we are. And I firmly believe that through all the fear, through the grief, that you know what? This will be our finest hour, folks. God bless. I love you. Take care.